Today we're talking about osmosis, diffusion, and filtration for the fluids in your body. Now let's go through some fancy medical definitions. Now diffusion is the movement of solutes from an area of greater concentration to an area of lesser concentration, leading ultimately to equalization of the solute concentration. It occurs through random movement of ions and molecules. Now a great example of diffusion would be the exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide, also called CO2, inside the lungs between the pulmonary capillaries and the alveoli. Now osmosis is kind of like the wet version of diffusion. So osmosis is the movement of fluid from an area of lower solute concentration to an area of higher solute concentration with eventual equalization of solute concentration. Basically the whole goal of diffusion and osmosis is to balance and equal out the playing fields here. So we don't want any clumping or crowding, it's all about sharing here because sharing is caring. Next term is filtration. Basically, the movement of water and solutes occur from an area of high hydrostatic pressure, key word here, to an area of low hydrostatic pressure. Now, the best example of this would be in the kidneys, basically the washing machines of the body that filter approximately 180 liters of plasma per day. Oh my gosh, that's like a ton of plasma. Oh my gosh, I know, right? Now, filtration is simply a passage of water and electrolytes through the arterial capillary bed in the interstitial fluid. It's all about fluid pressure, also called hydrostatic pressure, resulting from pumping action of the heart. All the way from the aorta down to the kidney washing machines directly, this pressure put on the kidneys helps the filtering process and helps the body wash out all the toxins and excess waste. But mainly they wash out HUC, Hydrogen ions, which are acidic, urea, also called BUN, a byproduct of protein metabolism, as well as creatinine, a byproduct of normal muscle function. But we'll get to that later in our kidney videos. Our next term is osmolality, which refers to the number of osmotically active particles per kilogram of water. It's simply the concentration of the solution, basically how heavy and concentrated is it. Now, osmotic pressure is measured by millimoles, or M-O-S-M. -S -M. Now, the normal osmolality of blood plasma is about 270 to 300. All right, so who cares about this, and why is it hugely important? Well, when we're talking about isotonic, hypo, and hypertonic fluids, you know, the fluids that you're going to be tested on your exam probably like next week, well, this becomes very, very important. Isotonic fluids have an osmolarity nearing 300, which is almost the exact same as human blood. It doesn't cause any fluid shifts outside the vascular spaces, so all that fluid stays inside the blood vessels. It's isoperfect. There's enough pressure on each side of the membrane to really satisfy both parties. So isoperfect. Next, we have our hypertonic fluids. You guys remember those skinny cells? Skinny like a hyper person. So these are fluids with osmolarities that are greater than 300. Basically, they suck that fluid out of the cell, making it super skinny in hypertonic solutions. The solution in hypertonic fluids have an osmotic pressure that is greater than the body's. So the fluid from the body is being pulled out of the cell into the vascular blood vessel spaces. Now, this is done in order to dilute and equalize the osmotic pressure from this thick hypertonic fluid. Last but not least, we have my favorite, the hypotonic fluids. Basically big like hippos, so I call them hippotonic fluids. These have osmolarity of less than 300, basically less than the body's normal osmolarity. So the osmotic pressure is greater in the body. Therefore, when hypotonic solutions are infused to the vascular spaces, like in your blood vessels, then the fluids are pulled out from the blood and into the cell, making the cells big and fat and swollen like big hippos. Kind of like a magnet that draws fluid from the blood vessel space and into the cell. Now the cells become big hippopotamuses, so hypotonics are big hippos.